You know what's funny? I don't really care about V10s. I've always thought the noise is just okay compared to a proper V8 or a V12. V8 is where it's at. Then I'm reminded that this car exists. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the noise that just does stuff to your brain, your heart, your soul, all of that stuff. That is one of the best sounding notes in the automotive kingdom. And it comes from the back of the Audi R8 Spider. Now, more specifically, this is the Audi R8 Performance Rear Wheel Drive Spider. This is kind of a going away party for the R8 because it's not long for this world. Audi has plans to electrify the next R8. And like its cousin car, which is a Lamborghini Huracan, that is getting a hybrid version for Lambo. Lambo. So for now, we just kind of soak in all that is awesome with this here V10 version. And that's very easy to do, allow me to demonstrate. We're in fourth gear, now we're in third gear, now we're in second gear. <laughs> this, is, this is silly good fun. Uh, I think red lines at like 8,700 RPM in a naturally aspirated 5.2 liter V10, here making 562 of those wonderful horsepowers. That's less than the all wheel drive version and I'm okay with that because I would prefer the rear-wheel drive version anyway. The all-wheel drive version weighs like 110 pounds more or something like that, maybe 80 pounds more, I forget the exact number, uh, but it, it makes over 600 horsepower and it's like two tenths quicker to 60. This does three and a half seconds, which is plenty for me. Uh, it'll hit 200 miles per hour, which is a little bit less than the, uh, I believe it's less, I don't know if it's less than the coupe or less than the, I think it's less than the full 40 horsepower more version, the all-wheel drive version. I'm okay with that too. I don't need to go 204 versus 200. I don't have places to go 200. I barely have places to do what I need to do here. But I do have some. That's the thing about this car. It's been around for a while. You know, it's, it's evolved a bit. Uh, I remember when I drove a 2009 Audi R8 with the manual gearbox, the gated manual, and it was almost a life-changing moment. And when that car first came out, it was basically like driving around in a spaceship in the best way. It was, it was just an amazing machine. Time has marched on, and there are now tons of special cars out there. This one is still special, but there's things that I don't love about it like I used to. I'm not, I don't remember the spider being this uncomfortable. I don't think the coupe suffers from this problem, but I, I cannot get this seat into a position that makes me happy. I can get almost happy with the top down, but I'm not a convertible guy. I will say though, the car does look better with the top down. Here, I'll show you right now. This is with it top up and then presto changeo. This is with it down. I still prefer the coupe though, if we were picking, uh, but you know what, as it sits, this is a good way to go out, say goodbye to the car. It's just, it is so, so much fun. It's, it's, a lot of it is the noise, I'll be honest. Like the power is great, but the, the sonic, I was gonna say sonic sex, but that's like, that's just so cliche and stupid. The sonic enjoyment, the oral pleasure, <laughs> there, there you go, that's way better, is, off the scales on this car. I said I don't prefer, like I don't love the way Dodge Viper sound. I think they sound like incredibly exciting pickup trucks. Um, though I do like imbalanced engines because I like the way three cylinder cars sound, which is ridiculous. Though I still prefer inline sixes to V6s. Still for me V8, it's V8 all the way. But this V10, once you get it over 4,500, oh. So like if you're, uh, let me see if I can slow it down if there's anybody behind me. Okay, so let's go. No, let me go down to fourth. So right here we're cruising along third gear, you know, decent engine tone. There we go, it just clicks. Oh, and then if you let off, there's a little brrr. Not like overly aggressive, too much burble. This has the right amount of like, da-da, pa-pa-pa, ra-da-da-da. I don't know what I'm doing. So, 
you would think the rear wheel drive one would be like a special limited edition like ah they're getting they're letting a few of these out this one's not limited and in fact this is the less expensive version of the way to buy the r8 right now buy a lot there's about a fifty thousand dollar delta between the rear wheel drive and the quattro all-wheel drive version uh, this car starts at around 161 or so, as tested it's 186 because it has carbon fiber and uh, the performance exhaust and a few other craziness. Uh, I think this red interior is extra, you know, it's 186 is a lot. This is more than the GT3 Touring I just had and I would definitely take the GT3 Touring. But the coupe version starts at like 150 something. And then I built one online just to see if you wanted to do a rear wheel drive performance coupe. And I built it out to 159, which is a much better price. And all I added was the exhaust and the package that gets you the sound system. I hope that's not shaking too much because it really looks like it's a lot. So I need the tunes and I need the tunes. And 159 gets you there. But this doesn't have the, the ceramics, this doesn't have the 20s. You can option those up to catch up to the all-wheel drive version, but I like that this is, I'm almost gonna call this like a GTS version of the R8. The big dog with the all-wheel drive and the crazy expensive price tag and the ceramics and the adaptive dampers, whereas this has passive dampers that has active adaptive dampers, I believe. Um, you can option this with a carbon fiber front uh, sway bar to lighten up the steering. It's like an $1,100 option. Don't check any of that. Don't worry about it. This is not the most insane handling of the cars in its class. I mean, you gotta go McLaren at that point if you wanna play, and that's a more comfortable car too. Uh, but the McLaren sounds nothing like this car. This destroys the McLaren in the audio enjoyment category. Oh, it does not get old. I spent a week with this car and as soon as I fire it up in my driveway, I immediately hit the little checkered flag button. I don't go into sport, I go straight into performance mode and it, it, it puts the gearbox into like, all right, well, you're gonna shift it then, set up, everything else is in sport, so to speak. It relaxes traction control and it's still very, it feels great. Steering's a little, a little lazy on this car, but I would love to drive it on a, on a racetrack to really explore the limits a bit more than my local canyon roads, which, you know, you can only bring it up so far. Then you're like, okay, buddy, okay, chill out on a racetrack. If you slide off a little bit, as long as you stay away from the walls, you can understand the car at a deeper level. And that makes sense for a car like this, but just cruising around. It's great, it's great. I'd go coupe, I'm not a convertible guy. I'd spec it as lowly as possible to keep it under 160, which, I mean, at that point, you clearly have tons of money and, and you can do whatever the hell you want. Um, but this one at 186, I'm not necessarily down with it because of that aforementioned GT3 Touring, which was 180, 180, 182. Um, but I also love, one thing I do like about the convertible is you can open this back window and let more noise in, they know what's up. It's, it's just so good. It, 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 yeah, I love it, I love it. It's, it's, the, the car is aged and it is still an amazing thing to drive. It's almost entering Nissan GTR territory of like, wow, that's old, but oh my God, it's so fast and so fun. Um, unlike the GTR, this car is getting set to evolve. So that's good news for the rest of us. If you don't like electrics, I guess you'd wait for the hybrid Uricon that'll be in the future if it's still called an Uricon. Um, but electrifying this could be a lot of fun too. I will say, I'm gonna miss the noise.